Alright, good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's live cooking demonstration. Just a few quick things as we're setting up before we get started here. We are going to be recording today's session. So if you would like to share the see the recording again later or share it with a colleague, you will have that option. We'll be emailing that out to everyone. Additionally, during today's session, if you have any questions, uh, any comments, ideas for this recipe, please feel free to add them in the chat. We'll be sure to keep an eye on the chat and then review those questions and comments at the end of today's presentation. Additionally, if you are experiencing any audio or visual issues during today's presentation, um, please use the chat feature. Make sure that you are sending your issue to all panelists. My uh, colleague, Tony Pelote is online and she'll be able to assist you with that if you're having any issues. With that being said, we will go ahead and get started today. Let me get my camera going here. Okay. All right, so again, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ryan Smith. I am the wellness program administrator with employee development and wellness services at Georgia State University. By trade, I am a registered dietitian and I am very excited to be cooking with you today. This recipe is really interesting. I will admit up front that I am typically not a huge fan of uh, curries or kind of Indian style cuisine. It's just not my favorite, but I saw this recipe and I really wanted to try it because I thought it was interesting and I absolutely love it. I was really surprised by it. Uh, and that's kind of the fun of trying new recipes sometimes is you might bump into something that normally doesn't fit your taste profile uh, and then you're just pleasantly surprised. So I'm pretty eager to share this one with you. I really enjoy it. I think that you will as well. So before we get into all the ingredients and everything, in terms of equipment, to be making these chickpea dumplings with the curried tomato sauce, you are going to need a stovetop and a medium or preferably large skillet. You can get by with a medium skillet as you'll see me do today, uh, but the bigger skillet you have, the less or the more room you'll have and the less likely you are to spill things and kind of make a mess as you're stirring and combining the ingredients. Otherwise, you'll need a mixing bowl and a cutting board, and that's about it. Uh, it's a pretty simple recipe in terms of equipment, which is great. You can also make this fairly fast. The prep, which is the bulk of what we'll be doing on camera today, takes about 15 minutes, and then there's 20 minutes of really low maintenance cooking. So it's easy to make, makes four servings, and I think it'll definitely be a crowd pleaser uh, if you give it a try. So let's talk about the ingredients as we are going to start combining them. So for the chickpea dumplings, we're gonna need a large mixing bowl that we're gonna combine all the ingredients in. And we will actually be using chickpea flour today. So this is like all purpose flour, like a wheat flour, except it's made from chickpeas. And the benefit of this is that we're gonna be getting extra fiber and extra protein compared to traditional flour. So we're taking the vegetable power of chickpeas, condensing it into a flour, and now we're going to make dumplings with it. You can use chickpea flour for a variety of different things, a lot of different baking needs. You can add it to sauces to thicken them up if you're interested, but we'll just be making the dumplings today. And we're gonna measure out a cup and two tablespoons of the flour. That should be just enough to make the 16 dumplings that we'll be forming. And we're not trying to pack it down or anything, so pour and you can just sift it a little bit gently, get yourself about a cup, and then like I mentioned, we're gonna add two additional tablespoons, which I'm actually just gonna eyeball here. I'm pretty comfortable doing that at this point. And that should be enough to get us our dumplings. Now, chickpea flour, you can find in the grocery store next to your other flours, typically. It'll be there with things like rice flour, coconut flour. There's a bunch of different types, but look for your all-purpose flour. And this is Bob's Red Mill brand is the name of this one. This just happened to be what they had at my store, but any chickpea flour will do. So we've got our chickpea flour in there. We're gonna add a couple more ingredients to it. In terms of the vegetables that we're working with today, this is going to be an incredibly nutritious meal. It is almost exclusively vegetables. So we're really packing in all the vitamins and minerals that we can. We're going to use four cups of spinach today. Now you can really use any green you want. If you wanted to use kale or mustard greens, you absolutely could. I'm just gonna work with spinach. And of those four cups, we're actually just gonna start with half a cup here. Let's make sure that's about half a cup. We're gonna start with half a cup here and we're just gonna chop this up and end up adding this into our dumpling mixture. So I'm working with baby spinach, which is nice because it's a little bit smaller to start off with. If you wanna buy the full 
Uh, big leaf spinach, you absolutely can, but we do want to finely chop it. What I do is I sort of bunch it up into uh, kind of scrunching it into like a cigar shape, and then I'm going to carefully run my knife through it. The cuts don't have to be super precise. Our goal is just to finely chop it so that whenever we're making the dumplings, we can have little pieces of spinach in here, little bits of nutrition, but without going overboard, we don't want a really big leaf whenever we bite into the dumpling. All right. So once you get that chopped up, we can go ahead and add that half a cup of the chopped spinach into the flour. Next up, we're going to use a quarter cup of diced red onion, which I've gone ahead and pre-cut here so I don't cry on camera while I do it. So we'll put that in. That's going to add some nice flavor to things, um, just make it a little more complex, which is nice. Now, the next ingredient we'll be adding to the dumplings is actually going to be spicy. So this is a good opportunity for you to decide how spicy you want to make it. Uh, I'm keeping it reasonably mild by my taste today and just using a single jalapeno. Now, if you want to use spicier peppers, you absolutely can, and it'll be delicious in this recipe. I made a batch earlier using serrano peppers, which are uh, a decent step up from jalapenos. On average, they're about twice as spicy as jalapenos. So if you think these are spicy, uh, you probably don't want to do serrano, but if you're like, jalapeno, that's nothing, that could be a good step up to do. Those are pretty readily available at the grocery store. Now, there are peppers that go far beyond that in terms of spiciness, but I'm not going to be working with those today. We're going to keep it pretty accessible for most people. Now, with any pepper, uh, capsaicin is what makes them spicy. So a chili pepper is a pepper with capsaicin in it. And when it comes to the capsaicin, the bulk of it is going to be in the white spongy part of any pepper you get. Some people think it's in the seeds. It's actually mostly in that white membrane part. The seeds just happen to be close to that. So there's a little bit of association. You can de-seed your peppers. You can cut out that white part. Uh, I typically don't do that because the whole reason I'm using the pepper is to make things spicy. So what I'm doing is I'm just cutting this into long vertical strips and I'm gonna turn it perpendicular and run my knife the other way to just get a nice dicier. I want this to be spicy but I also don't want to bite into a super big piece of jalapeno every time I encounter the spice. So just chop it up as finely as you'd like. If you don't like spicy food at all, it's, you're one of the people that's just like, I really can't handle it. Um, you could do some little, uh, little bits of bell pepper in here. Chop those up. You'll still get the nutrition that the pepper brings, but without the capsaicin. So that can work really nicely for this. So we've chopped that up. We'll go ahead and add it in. Something else to note is if you're working with any form of chili pepper that's spicy, be aware that when you touch it with your hands, those oils are on your hands. So if you rub your eye or anything like that, it's going to burn. And in fact, if you use uh, extra spicy peppers, if you really get up there on the chart, even just touching them with your skin can cause a burning sensation on your hands. So if you're working with really hot ones, um, wearing gloves can be important for that. For the jalapeno, you're good to just chop it up, use your hands, and then I recommend washing them as soon as you're done. Keep in mind that the cutting board, the knife, anything you've touched after you've handled it may have those uh, oils on them, so be aware of that. I've rubbed my eyes way too many times and caused that burning sensation, so trying to avoid that. Um, okay, so we've got the onions, we've got the jalapeno, we've got the chickpea flour, we've got a couple more things we're gonna add here. We're actually gonna use some plain Greek yogurt. So this is gonna help things bind together. We're adding a little bit of a liquid with this to some degree. We're also boosting the protein content, which is always nice. So I'm gonna measure out a quarter cup of this yogurt. Now, this is the only ingredient that is not vegan. This is otherwise a full vegetarian or a full vegan recipe, except for the yogurt. So the yogurt makes it just vegetarian. Um, you can, if you'd like, substitute it for a plant-based yogurt, and then this recipe becomes vegan very easily, which I know some people may be interested in. So we put that quarter cup in. The next ingredient we'll be adding is you can use a vegetable oil of your choice. I'm going to work with olive oil today, canola oil, soybean oil. Those are all good choices as well. And we're going to measure out a third of a cup of oil. This part's important. Um, it's going to help with the flour so that it will all stick together. So a third of a cup going in there. I'm going to set the oil over here. because We're going to use that again a little bit later in the recipe. Okay, so oil, yogurt, jalapenos, red onions, and the chickpea flour. The last little ingredient we'll add is we're going to do half a teaspoon of salt. 
just to give it a little flavor. Some of the other ingredients we're working with are either no salt added or low sodium, which is great. So we can add in the exact amount of salt we want uh, without going overboard. So we're using just half a teaspoon here. So in your mixing bowl, you've just got these ingredients. What you're gonna wanna do is just stir to combine. Now the yogurt and the oil, as I mentioned, are kind of our wet ingredients. And we want to make sure as I'm stirring, you can see how dry that flour is. We wanna make sure that the oil and the yogurt are coming into contact with the flour. Of course, we're trying to distribute and break up the onion and the jalapeno as well, and those uh, the spinach that we chopped up in there, I forgot about that. Um, but really stir it around so that the flour gets a little moist. Now, if you've watched these demonstrations before, a couple of weeks ago, we made a red lentil, uh, these red lentil fritters, which were really tasty. Um, they suffered from a similar issue that if when we've made falafel before, when we've made veggie burgers before, Often when we use beans or chickpeas, getting them to stick together and form a patty can be pretty difficult. It'll sometimes fall apart as you're moving it to the skillet um, and you have to be pretty careful. One thing I really like about this recipe because we're using chickpea flour and it's so finely ground, when we mix it with these wet ingredients, we're almost forming a dough here. Um, it, the texture ends up feeling a lot like cookie dough would, or if you've made just traditional dumplings with regular flour before, it's similar to that. So this is super easy to work with by comparison, which I love, because like I said in the past, I've kind of had to think an awful lot about, okay, how am I gonna move this to the stove without it falling apart? Um, whether I'm doing it on camera or not, that's just an issue. So once you've stirred that up a little bit, let me grab a napkin here. Once you've stirred that up well enough, and I'll show you what it looks like now, you can see it's not powdery anymore. It is forming sort of a dough, a uh, little unconventional dough though, because we've worked in all these vegetables to make it healthy. What you're gonna want is just a plate or some sort of surface to start scooping the dumplings onto. So with this mixed around, you're gonna, you should be able to get about 16 chickpea dumplings out of this. Using a tablespoon as your guide, you will scoop into them. And then I will, so I scoop and then I press against the side of the bowl to kind of flatten it. I try to remove the extras. And then once you've got that, you can use your hands and just scoop out the middle of it. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in terms of the texture here. Uh, as I am balling this up, you can see it's kind of like, <laughs> cookie dough is not the best thing to compare it to, but it is just like a dough. Um, it's pretty sticky, but it's fairly firm. It's not gonna fall apart or crumble like the lentil fritters or the uh, falafel that we've made in the past. So ball that up and set it on your plate. And we're gonna repeat this process 16 times because that's how many of the little dumplings we get. So again, using your tablespoon, you will scoop it up, flatten it, use your hand a little bit, roll it into a ball. It's actually not that messy at this point. Once you've mixed it together, that flour has absorbed the oil and the yogurt. So your hands don't even get that dirty. So we'll just continue doing this. Let's talk a little bit about the nutrition that we've packed into here, because I think it's really impressive how healthy you can make something like a dumpling, just depending on the ingredients that you put into it. So by adding the jalapeno peppers, we've added fiber, just because all the vegetables will have some fiber in them. A little bit of water content coming from any vegetable as well. So that's a nice bonus. Jalapenos are actually a great source of vitamin C. So as we are, you know, keeping our immune system strong, having that vitamin C in there can be very beneficial. There are also some studies out there that suggest there might be some health benefits to eating spicy foods with capsaicin in them. So eating some of those chili peppers. Um, so that is a potential health benefit as well. When we add in the spinach, of course, it's no secret that spinach is incredibly nutritious. It is a plant-based source of iron. Uh, it's got vitamin A in it, vitamin K in it. So spinach is just, it's truly a superfood. So, so far we've only added in half a cup of it, but you're gonna see we'll work in the other three and a half cups into the curry, which means that for the four servings that this makes, each serving has a full cup of spinach in it, plus some jalapeno, you've got some red onions. And then, as I mentioned, the base of the dumplings here is the chickpea flour, which has all the nutritional benefits that chickpeas would. So we're getting fiber, we're getting a plant-based source of protein, we're getting vitamins and minerals with it, um, these are all low sodium foods, which is phenomenal. So we added a little bit of salt to give it some flavor, but we're keeping it heart healthy. Uh, this is just a really, really great recipe for health. So we're making our way through these dumplings. We're getting pretty close here. Um, we got about, I think, 10 of them done so far. 
And then the yogurt that I mentioned we added in, I said it added a little bit of protein, but yogurt comes with some other nutritional benefits as well. As a dairy food, we'll get some calcium, which is great for our bone health, especially as we, well, as we're growing up, we want calcium to form strong bones. And then as we're aging, we want calcium to be able to keep those strong bones. Um, bone loss can be an issue as people age and we want them to stay strong. We can support that with physical activity and our nutrition, just keeping those bones healthy. The yogurt is also a good source of potassium, which has some heart health benefits. Potassium can kind of, you can kind of think of it as like a balance to the sodium. When our body takes in sodium, uh, the way it works is we have sort of a balance inside between potassium and sodium. So most Americans don't get enough potassium in their diet. We can get it from fruits, vegetables, and some healthy dairy foods. So having some in this is just a great way to kind of supplement that. But the nutrition really doesn't stop there. We are going to make use of the tomatoes that I have on my left here for the curry. And tomatoes, I've mentioned them several times in these demonstrations, another just absolute superfood. They are a source of lycopene, which is a powerful antioxidant. If you're unfamiliar with antioxidants, they are able to fight free radicals in our body, which is just a way of saying it's protective against cancer and it has some cancer fighting qualities too. So anytime you can get some tomatoes in your diet, just absolutely phenomenal. And our entire curry sauce is based on these tomatoes that we've got here. So this really, really packs a lot of health. All right, one more dumpling. I know I've been doing this forever. Like I said, this is really where most of the work comes from is just scooping this up and getting your dumpling. I think, let's see how many I got. Uh, oh, I actually did one extra. So I got 17 out of that. So it'll depend on, you know, your flour and how big you make them. So we'll set that over to the side here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, get the stove top ready here in just a second. But first, we're going to chop up the remaining three and a half cups of spinach. So just like before, I'm going to just grab a little bit at a time to keep it manageable. I'm gonna pinch it together and just run my knife through it, making small strips. Now, if you have a food processor, you might be able to chop it using the food processor and save a little bit of time. Keep in mind, our goal is not really to juice it, so don't go too heavy on it. Um, a couple quick pulses will probably be plenty to get it chopped up. We are gonna be using this in the sauce, so it's gonna cook down pretty significantly. Spinach will always shrink in volume whenever we heat it up. So we don't even have to worry too much about how big it is. We just want it to be reasonable sized strips. So we'll continue cutting through this. Now, as we move to the stove, we're gonna be making use of a couple different seasonings to give this some flair, uh, give it some fun kick and kind of bring in uh, some of those just Indian cuisine flavors that you would expect. So we'll be using some cumin, uh, we'll be using some mustard seed, some coriander seed, and then of course we'll be using some red curry powder, which is where I think the most signature flavor of this dish comes from. Okay, just about done here with the spinach. And like I mentioned before, I'm using baby spinach, but if you buy the big leaves, the process is pretty much the same. Uh, you'll have to cut just a little more since those pieces will start bigger. Um, but these cuts do not have to be perfect by any means. You can see I've got some big pieces, I've got some small pieces, but it's going to cook down and wilt, so it'll be fine. So we're going to turn our attention over here. You are going to want a lid for your skillet, and I'll actually show you. I don't have a lid that fits the skillet. What I do have is a lid that almost fits the skillet. Um, so I can press it down in there. This means that the edges of the lid are gonna get a little tomato-y, but that's totally fine. Work with the best lid that you've got. Um, we are gonna end up covering it to cook. So as much as you can cover is great. It does not have to be a perfectly sealed. Thing. So what I'm gonna do next is we're gonna use two tablespoons of whatever cooking oil. And we're going to add it to the skillet. Got my two tablespoons and at this point, like I mentioned, we've got a couple different seasonings going in, and I actually forgot to mention one. So cumin, coriander, uh, red curry powder, mustard seed, and then we've actually got some ginger as well. And the amounts for those, we're going to use a full tablespoon of the red curry powder, two teaspoons of the coriander seeds, 
one teaspoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of ground mustard, and then a teaspoon of ground ginger as well. So a lot of flavor going into this. It does come out really, really tasty whenever the sauce has all those different seasonings in it, which I really enjoy. So we're heating the oil up over there and I'm actually gonna move these seasonings over to our skillet. All right. And once you've got that oil heated, we're actually just gonna dump the seasonings on top of the oil and let them cook. Nothing too fancy. You can use a spoon, just mix them around. Mix into that one teaspoon in the bottom. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and add in our tomatoes. So I have a 15 ounce can of no salt, petite, diced tomatoes. All of those words are important. <laughs> so no salt added because we're keeping the sodium low. Petite, meaning that they're going to be smaller. This is going to work well for the curry that we're making. They are diced because we want them to again be chopped up. Um, and a lot of times you'll drain the tomato juice out of these diced tomatoes. We're going to keep the juice. So all the liquid in here is about to go into that skillet. Over here, we have no salt added tomato sauce. Again, a 15 ounce can. Same idea. The whole thing's going in. So we can go ahead and add this. So the tomato paste, or the tomato, sorry, the tomato sauce gives it a little bit of thickness, um, but it's that nice, saucy texture we're looking for. The diced tomatoes will just add more interesting texture to it. So now we're going to add in the three and a half cups of spinach. So as I'll show you here, I am working with a lot in this skillet at the moment. So if you've got a large skillet, that's ideal. We're going to And then we will carry over our three and a half cups of chopped spinach and mix those in as well. As you add this, you may be able to see from there. If not, I can show you. Um, it is you can see there's a lot of volume, but like I mentioned, it will cook down. So stir it in if you're using. You want to submerge the spinach. And the final thing we're going to do before we set this up for cooking is we are going to place our chickpea dumplings in because they need to cook as well. So each little dumpling, you know, with the chickpea flour and all those ingredients, um, we're going to submerge it in the sauce. And what that means is I'm just going to put it in there like they're little guys at a swimming pool. They're going to be hanging out in there and we will cover it with the lid and bring it to a simmer. So when I say bring it to a simmer, we don't want a bunch of bubbles like when you're boiling water for a pasta. That's a little too hot. A simmer means we have some gentle bubbles rising to the top, um, but it's not boiling over. It's not popping really high, especially in the size of the skillet we have. Uh, that could get out of hand. So I'm going to go place these in there and just kind of nestle them inside of the saw. And try to spread them out if you can. So they almost look like little meatballs that I'm cooking inside of some tomato sauce, but yeah, just a little chickpea dumplings. So we'll go ahead and set them over here. While cooking, you'll periodically want to take some sauce and pour it on top of them, almost like you're basting, and rotate the chickpea balls as well. You don't have to be super attentive, just every five minutes or so you can come over and pour. I'm actually going to pour some sauce over them right now. Because the more submerged, better. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lid and we're going to set it on top. 
And at this point, you'll want to find a heat on your stovetop that produces that simmering effect. So we set it there. We're watching for small bubbles to rise to the top. Again, we're not looking to boil it or anything like that. So for the first couple minutes, I, I would recommend keeping a closer eye on it. You may need to move the temperature up, move the temperature down a little bit, just depending on how hot your stovetop is. Gas ones tend to heat up a little faster than the electric that I have here. So be aware of that. So what we'll do at this point is this will actually cook for 20 minutes. During the course of that 20 minutes, like I mentioned, every five or so, go on by and lift the lid up, flip the chickpeas over using a spoon or anything else that you've got. Um, just give it a little bit of a stir, but we'll cook it for a total of 20 minutes. During that time, the volume of the curry will reduce as some of the steam exits and the tomato sauce condenses. Our spinach will also steam and cook down. It'll lose some of that water content. And then the chickpea dumplings and the chickpea flour will cook all the way through. So again, that's a 20 minute cook time. I have gone ahead and prepared some though to show you what it will. So when it comes out, you will have a, I just sprinkled some little spinach on top, kind of like a garnish. You'll have a nice red curry sauce there. And let me get a fork out and I can try to show you what the uh, dumplings look like. Try to scoop one out here. So they do, honestly, they kind of look like meatballs whenever I'm pulling them out there, but they are so tasty. Uh, I've never really thought about putting jalapenos or spicy peppers like that inside of like a dumpling or inside of, even if you were doing like a, a meatball, whether it's an actual meatball or a meatless meatball, it's so good though. You bite into it, you get a little bit of that kick from it. So I really, really enjoy the recipe. Nutritionally, you heard me talk about all the different vitamins and minerals that go into this, from the tomatoes to the spinach to the jalapenos to the chickpea flour. It is so incredibly nutritious. This recipe makes four servings, and a serving will consist of four of the chickpea dumplings and about three quarters cup of the curry sauce that goes with it. It'll have 450 calories in it, about 13 grams of protein, and 40 grams of carbs. The great news is though, most of those carbs are coming from fiber actually, because we've got so many fiber, so much fiber in the vegetables and the chickpea flour. So very, very heart healthy, definitely a diabetic friendly recipe. Um, and as you can see, not too complicated to make. Most of the work happens here with forming the dumpling. And then we just keep an eye on it over there. Um, and I can actually tell it is simmering. It's at a good temperature. We've got a little bit of steam coming up, some light bubbles, but nothing too crazy. Um, so that really is the full recipe. If you wanted to serve it with something else, add a little more to it. Um, some non bread would be really tasty with this. I know that that is a bread that's often paired with Indian cuisine. It goes really well together. Uh, if you don't have non bread, certainly you could have a little bit of like a whole wheat pita or something else on the side if you wanted to add it. But even on its own, this functions really well. I actually have it in this dish because this is like a perfect meal prep size. If you've got little Pyrex containers, you can put a lid on it, keep it in the fridge, and then heat it up at the microwave at your office, and you've got a really tasty meal on your hands. So I see we got a couple of messages in the chat. I do want to take a peek at those real quick. Um, okay, it sounds like we were having some audio issues at some point. I apologize for that. Hopefully you're able to hear me okay now. Uh, we are going to be sending out a copy of the recipe, so if there's any part of the video that you weren't able to hear, we'll be sure to have that covered in the recipe. You can follow the step-by-step -step instructions to make it yourself at home. Again, I do apologize for those issues that we're running into. Um, with that being said, we're gonna send out again, a copy of the recipe, a copy of the recording, as well as a link to a short survey where you can let us know how your session experience was today. So if you had any audio issues, we'd love to hear about them. Let us know what was going on. We can try to troubleshoot those in the future as well. Um, and as well as just giving us any feedback about the types of recipes you'd like to see, any ideas for future demonstrations, foods that you'd like to learn more about, we'd love to hear that kind of feedback. We also have several well-being sessions that happen throughout the month, um, not just cooking demonstrations, we do virtual workouts, guided meditation and yoga, stretch breaks, all sorts of excellent stuff. Tomorrow at 12 p.m. we'll actually be doing a yoga and meditation session, so we encourage you to check that out. Uh, and if you're not already on our mailing list, you can sign up for the mailing list at edws at gsu.edu. Just shoot us an email and we'll get you put on there. Uh, and I will go ahead and add that in the chat after the session ends as well for anyone who may want to join the mailing list. So with that being said, thank you again so much everyone for attending. Keep an eye out for that follow-up email with the recipe and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.